Welcome to Bert's Garage, a YouTube miniseries dedicated to building an exoset out of a fully functioning Mazda Miata. We're going to be pulling apart a 1999 NB and building one hell of an exoset. You guys better strap in and hold on. This is going to be one hell of a ride. And first to arrive is Bert, avid YouTuber and 3D printing enthusiast. He likes big guns and he likes to go fast. And the next member of our team to arrive is Doug, all around Miata expert and good guy to have on your side when you're working on a Miata because he's never wrong and he reminds you because he's never wrong. And last but not least to arrive is John, Miata expert, turbo expert, good all around mechanic and the guy you wanna to talk to about boost. You wanna go fast, he's the guy to talk to, especially in a Miata. And now that you've met our team, it's time to get to work. First things first, we're gonna need tools and supplies. Here we have a bolt organizer, very, very important. It has four individual trays with several individual little pockets to put things. Make sure you label everything because if you don't label things, you're gonna have a bad day. Second, really big stuff up top or really awkward things like camber bolts and things that are too big to fit in those. Obviously you wanna individually bag them and keep them together or you're gonna have a bad day. Make sure you keep these in some sort of an order. That way, so when you start rebuilding, you can work your way backwards from where you started. Now let's move on to tools that we're going to need. We're going to need a master mechanic tool set here. We have quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch drive. We're going to need sockets ranging from 27 millimeters all the way down to eight millimeters, I think is the smallest we need. All six point sockets, otherwise you're going to end up rounding bolts and that's going to be a really bad thing, as well as a large breaker bar. Then we're going to need screwdrivers from flathead and Phillips head screwdrivers all the way down to the smallest ones for those pesky trim pieces, an impact driver, impact bolt, universal joints, painter's tape, magnetic trays for your bolts, deep well sockets, needle nose pliers, dikes, a larger pair of dikes, and a flashlight. And now that we've got that figured out, let's get to work. All right, so what do we got, John? All right, so right now we got two 14 millimeter wrenches. We're just loosening this up so we can actually park the cable for the e pop the cable for the e-brake off. Uh, we already have it disconnected from the chassis up there. So basically this is just gonna hang in and this is all, the brake system is going to come all out with the subframe, leaving the actual cable sitting up here. Now one thing you'll notice also is right there and right there as well and back here, we have already pre-lubed with penetrating oil. All of the main bolts are going to separate the chassis from the actual tub is what they call it. Uh, these things have a lot of oil or a lot of buildup of rust and just garbage on them. So cleaning them off is obviously a smart idea because if you ever intend on salvaging the tub, maybe to a scrap yard like we do, ruining those threads pretty much ruins the entire tub because they're very difficult to work on and you don't want to do that. Also, it makes your life a lot less difficult to you know, get the bolts off. So do that front and back. There are several bolts. If you happen to find another one that you can't get off, hit it with some penetrating fluid and wait. 10 15 minutes and then try and tackle it again all right so what i'm doing real quick here is we're working our way around each one of the shock towers is going to have two of these 14 millimeter bolts they're very similar to exhaust bolts in that they are kind of usually oval locking bolt locking nuts whatever you want to call the damn things they tend to be on there pretty tight so you're going to need something with a decent bit of leverage up here not so much an issue but if we go back to the back You'll catch here that the shock towers actually come up in the rear of the car all the way up beside the wheel wells and this one you'll actually have your fuel filler net kind of in your way so it's going to make it even more of a challenge but trying to break these guys loose in a limited space you're probably going to bust a knuckle against something because it is a tight space but you just kind of need to get in here and you just got to wrench these guys off you can see these ones are a little looser because i've already broken them loose but you're going to want to take those off you've got four back here four up there those are going to come off and keep your shock towers essentially attached to the vehicle. And then from that point, we're going to be moving our way under the car to start working on the subframes. Working our way back up here on the body and we've got a few things left connected. Fuel expansion canister over here is still attached and all the mechanisms we kind of moved over, over to the engine. But you've still got a hard line coming up here along the body. There's another one back here for the actual fuel too. So we're going to need to disconnect these. What we're going to do, this guy here, we can just kind of unclip. This is going to be an easy one to get a hold of. We're just going to take a pair of pliers, lift that up off of there, and then we should be able to inevitably pull this off of here. Ugh, might still be stuck after some time, but they do come off. 
Lastly here, we've got one of these fuel lines. Now these things can be a pain in the butt to deal with if you do not have the correct tools. Fortunately, we do. These little fuel line disconnects, you can get them in a little section like this. And what you're gonna do with one of these, you see how it's split. You're just gonna take it, wrap it around the line, and we're gonna put it underneath to get a hold of the plastic tabs. And we're gonna have something handy to uh, catch some gas in case. John, watch your head down here, just in case this guy goes and spurts. We're gonna pop you off. So there we've got our gas line off, completely disconnected from the main line coming back from the fuel tank. So now that's clear and it's gonna smell a lot like gas in here. So that's gonna be awesome after a short little bit. But uh, we're just kind of catching what's left coming out of the fuel rail and stuff like that here in this can. And uh, it's kind of dirty, so that's great. But other than that, we've got pretty much everything disconnected up at this end and we are down working at the suspension at this point. So what we've got going on here is we've noticed that there is a single hard brake line still attached from the body out to the distribution block and we can see here that that is actually going back along the subframe all the way back over to the driver's side and so we're going to need to leave this guy intact and in place and remove this hard line here in order to get the subframe down off so we're going to take a 10 millimeter line wrench here and we're just going to attach this guy on and that is how we're going to take that off there so that is now going to spin completely free And fortunately, this one came off nice and easy. So that is now ready to go, and that should be disconnected that we can get this free and clear. So what are we doing here? Uh, disconnecting the uh, steering rack and the shaft right here. That's the last thing that we have that's going into the actual body of the car. And once that's out, it should just be moving on to the subframe bolts. And it's as simple as just loosening that 12 millimeter and pulling this straight out here. Uh, one thing we probably should do before we pull this out is mark it with a sharpie so we can put it in the exact same spot. There we go. You got it? Yep. Just took a lot of wiggling. And she's out and free. Right, pop this back in here. Take the key break in this out. Don't want to lose oh, that. A couple pounds less junk. Okay, what are we doing here, team? All right, so what we're doing down here, first of all, we are getting a jack underneath to stabilize the subframe because now the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking off a series of bolts. In the front subframe here, you're going to find two bolts up here right behind the shock. Um, there will be two 19 millimeter bolts there, and then we'll come down underneath, and you're going to find two more bolts attaching the front subframe to the car. They're both 17 millimeter. You'll find one back at the rear end of the lower control arm, and then you'll have one more all the way back here at the trailing end of the subframe. So once you take those two off, the two up above, up by the upper control arm, and you do the same on the other side, you've essentially got your front subframe down clear and free. So we are going to get these guys off, and they're going to be on there with a decent bit of tension. So we are going to use a half-inch ratchet and a cheater bar. Right here. What are we doing, Doug? Well, what we're doing, we got the front subframe loose, uh, thanks to Handy Dandy, and uh, we're now going to work on the rear subframe, so we're right now taking out the two bolts. Well, essentially, there's four bolts that hold covers over the two bolts that hold the differential to the body, and then we've got the subframe itself, which is then going to have a series of six bolts, three on each side, and we're going to, then once we've got that apart, we're going to be bringing both of the subframes down. We've got the wheels over here. Because we've already unbolted everything on this subframe now, so the wheels are on here. We're going to do the same once we get the rear all taken down. We're going to put the wheels on, and we are going to sequentially lower the subframes out from under the body, pending that nothing is attached still to the donor. So we took out the two bolts that are attached to the differential on each end. They're both 17s. Very long bolts that go up into the actual tub or body of the Miata. Sorry, man. And then on each side, we have... Um, very large bolts as well that come down right here that we've already tailed, detailed on. Doug already, we already got that. That's it's already loose. So it's, it's so we've got one here. We've got one that was on this long bolt here, and then there's one more right here in the center. And it should be the series of those three on each side to then inevitably bring this guy down. And as you can see too, we've gotten our e-brake cables off of the brake calipers, so that way these guys are clean and clear of the body, brake lines free. And as far as we can tell, looking at everything else. We should have everything clear off of the subframe, the body, the brace that runs in between. We should be in good shape once we get this guy unbolted. 
to begin the full separation. We're just looking over everything right now. The tub and the roller skate are now ready to be separated. This is the moment. So right now we're just looking over everything. Um, I'm not doing a whole lot of heavy lifting right now because I just had surgery on my arm, so I can't do a whole hell of a lot, unfortunately. So we're just gonna kind of take a couple minutes and look over it, and then we're gonna separate these two, which have been married for the last 20 years. folks nothing fancy to it she is separated hot damn look at that well, let's everyone watch your feet yep let's bring her up um oh yeah we can do it by this all right um guidance on the other side all right so one of you guys rear one of you guys front yep i think that's going to be the best way to handle this right now all right remember guys crush hazard so yes. be careful all right, we are floating. We are fucking floating. All right, we are leaning hard over to that way. I know, because of the way the chains are balanced. All right. Now, the real challenge, because this thing is pretty much up against the jack right now, is can we even get high enough to clear over what we need to clear over? We should be able to. All right. I'm going to go backing. The rear is already clear of every time. The front is not even close. Yeah. All right, Wait, guys, what if we balance it backwards a little bit? Well, right now we need to do what we're doing because we are almost up and out of the way. Yep, we're almost up. All right, guys, make sure you've got support on that driver's side because we're leaning more and more as we go up. I'm pulling up one in a little. I'm holding very little. All right. How's that, Clarence? Good, we should be able to make it. All right. Just barely slide it back. Watch the line. So what we want to do, um, looking at it here, back about three feet. And I over think ten. what we want to do is we actually, because we have to basically come this way around the roller skate. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to turn it and then turn it again. Copy that. So we're going to turn the ass first, and then we'll bring the nose to fall. Yeah, we're going to basically bring the ass end out first and bring the ass end in over here. So we'll. We'll start out over here. We're basically going to make a parallel park maneuver in the garage. We're going to take the rear end over this way. Okay. We're going to bring the rear end out towards the garage door, and then we'll swing the front end end over towards this direction. Now, guys, if this starts to go, just back the fuck yeah, up. Correct. Right. Just back the fuck up. As long as we are clear of that engine, we are out and out of the way. So at this point, are you guys ready to move? Let's yeah. move. All right, guys. Safety first. Safety first. All right. I am trying to maneuver free of the back right, here. Give me a little bit more height. Give me a little, bit a little, bit more. More height. A little bit more All height. All right, John, how are you over there on stability? I'm fine. You're good? All right. I have a good grip on everything. It's not all oil. Tell so me, right. right. Uh, that should be good there. Like there? All right, right there. All right, bringing the rear end out. I've got to thumb clear of these jacks before I can do anything else. So just beware. John, if you hear noises over there, it is the e-brake cable. I can yep. see it from over there. All right, we're gonna clear that hole. 
Correct. So now, now that we're almost at the pole, we should be able to start going back this direction. Right, okay. You good over there? We're good, Todd. We're good, sir. I got a wheel stuck on top of John, you alright? Yep, yeah, so good. Alright, how do you want Ferris to pull? Excellent. Alright, we're over, we're over, we're over. Alright. Bring her down safely. John. Jack stands. Jack stands. Yes, Jack stands. John, get Jack right, stands. Brace it. Yeah. I got it. It's not heavy. It's balanced pretty well. And also turn the camera on. Do we have the same height on the Jack stands? Yeah. Actually, you know what? Raise them towards the cabin. Raise them, yeah, because we're going to have to take off shit. Yeah, we're going to need room, and now we don't have the uh, the brace underneath, so. Yeah, let's max them. Uh, where we're going to sit, right? Uh, probably about eight inches higher than that. Yeah, um, about eight inches. Your ass is going to be on level with the uh, the PPF. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's probably got to be higher than that. you got to be able to see over the engine. A little bit. Uh, you figure his butt will be roughly the same height as about that right there. Yeah. Yeah, you should be sitting pretty close to where the bottom of the turn is. So how many hours do we think it took us to get to here? Manpower-wise, about 30 hours? I don't think we're even 20 into it, dude. Really? Because we've been documenting everything? Well, even beyond documenting, I mean, we've spent, so we've got two evenings in at about three to four hours a pop. And we've got two weekend dates in at about, let's call it an eight hour working day. Okay. So that's, you know, 16, 20, maybe 20 to 24 hours. hours right now. Nice. Now all we gotta do is hose this thing down because this fucker's built. And even then, a lot of that is trying to figure out what goes to what because none of us have ever tried to do anything like this. I've done my share of suspension work. I've had the differential out of the car, which shoot myself in the head before I do that again. I mean, I've done miscellaneous stuff in the engine bay, but uh, this is a whole nother undertaking. Now, we have wheels, tires, subframe, engine, things that go bang and things that have wires. <laughs> yeah, really. And then something that has none of those anymore. Except some tubes. It has tubes. Not for long. Not for long, no. So, obviously, historical landmark moment for us. It was extremely easy. A little bit of time and some patience and not being a complete idiot really helped. Uh, at least for these guys, I'm I'm beyond help. Um, next part, obviously, is to disassemble the front and rear chassis. Take it all apart, remove all of the bushings, and then we're going to send it away to get powder coated, jet black. That way, so when we put it all together, everything's clean and nice looking. Uh, we've got some repairs to make on the block here. We're going to redo the valve cover gasket and some stuff around the transmission. And new coilovers, new brakes, and a couple other things. We're going to be putting a Torsen limited slip differential on the back, which we do have. And once that's all done, we'll be waiting for the chassis. So unfortunately, that'll be about a month. Weeks. It'll be a couple weeks, probably about six, six, seven, maybe eight weeks. Hopefully not much longer than that. And then we'll be able to start cracking on finishing this thing up. Anything to say, guys? We're here. If we can do it, anyone can do it. I just want to drive it like this. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're Mr. Bean, maybe. But Well, guys, there we are. In relatively short periods of time, roughly 25 hours, we have turned a fully functioning Miata, my old Miata, into a working Exocet roller skate for a new car. This has been one of the coolest things I've ever built in my entire life. And honestly, I feel like an idiot for waiting so long to have built one. I was so intimidated, but with the help of John and Doug, I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your help with this project. I truly, truly appreciate it, guys. You are awesome. And this thing is gonna be just unstoppable on the track and on the road when we get it done. I swear, we are going to make so many cool videos and we are gonna probably start a whole new YouTube channel just for the Exo set. So you know what? We'll have to be thinking about that. We're kind of toying with the idea and we're gonna see what we're gonna do. Can't make any promises yet, but we're definitely, uh, we're definitely getting really, really excited with this. The project has come through with almost no problems whatsoever. Just waiting on the chassis really has been our biggest thing. Once we get everything pulled apart for the roller skate, we're going to send everything away. It's going to get media blasted, powder coated. We're going to put in new energy suspension bushings, the Torsen Limited slip differential, new wheels, larger brakes and brake rotors, new engine mounts, a new clutch from Flying Miata, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And we're going to make this thing handle 
like a brand new car straight off the factory line. That is what we wanted it to feel like. We want it to feel brand new. We want it to feel aggressive and we want it to feel just absolutely perfect. I don't want to cut any corners. I don't want to get cheap at any point either. We do have a budget, but I'm still trying to make sure that we make a recognizable, very, very pristine build. I don't want to get cheap. When you start getting cheap and you cut corners, you're not going to have the greatest product that you could have had and you're going to regret it. So we're trying to avoid that. Um, it's going to be a couple weeks until the chassis shows up. Once it does, obviously we've got to drill a whole bunch of holes for fuel lines, engine brackets, and brake lines, things of that sort. We're going to be putting a lot of rib nuts in it, I'm sure. We got to drill holes for the seats and some other things, which we've sourced some aluminum racing seats from Track Dog Racing. Thank you to them for all your guys' support. And yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to do. But until the chassis shows up, we still have a lot of things to work on. So hopefully we can keep you guys entertained in the meantime. Until next time, stay tuned. I am Bert from Pixel Armory. You know John and Doug. Stay cool, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys next. That doesn't even sound right. Screw it. Roll credits. We don't have, wait, we don't have credits. Shit. If you like Pixel Armory and the content we make, feel free to become a Patreon subscriber and support us just like our good friend Patrick.